Most people have goals in life. And we would Brooke think you gotta be goal oriented. That's the first mistake. The ability to manage your emotional state, your physiological emotional state, to show up in the moment feeling positive, certain, confident, clear, certain, clarity, courage, the four C's, selling, disempowered state, uncertainty, overwhelmed, fear. If you, you could be the greatest salesperson in the world, but if you knock on someone's door or you pick up that phone and you are in, in that moment, the state of uncertainty and overwhelm, in that moment, you might be the greatest salesperson. In that moment, you're blocked from accessing the skills and the greatness that you possess. State management is almost like a spigot. When it's open, when you're in an empowered state, it opens up for all the greatness in you to flow out, and when you're in this empowered state, the spigot is closed, and you are still great, but it's locked inside to express yourself in the world. Success is a crazy thing. You never know when it's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen, or when it is truly achieved. You'll always know it after the fact. And unfortunately, a lot of people are never truly prepared to become successful. They don't have what it takes to really go in and try to be a successful individual and achieve their dreams. There's so many people out there that are talkers and not doers. They say they wanna do this, that, and the other, yet they never make an asserted effort to go out and try to do what they want to do. They never try to reach their dreams. They only talk about it. The ones that only talk about their dreams are the ones that are always going to fail because they're never going to start. And the ones that go out and try and are the ones making the effort and putting in the actions in order to try to truly become successful are the ones that are going to have an exponentially larger chance of succeeding. All because they're putting forth that effort, trying and betting on themselves and putting energy and time and love into what they care about and trying to work as hard as they can until they reach success. Doing whatever it takes to discover how to reach their dreams and make their life as good as they can each and every day, no matter what happens. And some people just aren't built for that. Some people aren't going to be able to commit to such a hard time because they don't really want to achieve their goals. They think their future is whatever it wants to be when they're not trying to make it what they truly want it to be and what they truly desire. People don't realize how much of success is not an accident. It's like it's about people that have these extraordinary skills and they take action. So I'm a big believer in learning skills. Like you wrote, read my first book. Well, when I first tried to write, I was a terrible writer. Oh.
myself to write. So how did I write Wolf of Wall Street myself without a ghostwriter? I picked up a book called Bonfire of the Vanities. And as soon as I started reading, I'm like, oh my God, this guy's the best writer in the world. I want to write like that. And I used his book like a textbook. I took out my highlighter and I broke down his strategy for writing. I said, let me first teach myself the skill to write like Tom Wolf. And that's what I did. I spent about six or seven months with 18 hours a day. Oh yeah, yes, to the point I could recite the whole book verbatim. Wrap it up with Hunter Thompson Thompson to figure it makes sense because of the drug use, right? And then when I was reviewing the New York Times, they said the book sounds like Hunter S. Thompson and Tom Wolf. So it was, it was amazing, right? That I accomplished my mission and they t- turned myself into a writer. If you ask someone who's not a professional salesman, who doesn't have the right instincts, they'll start actually trying to sell you a pen. This pen is great. This pen writes upside down. Only one rational thing to do. Someone says, sell me this pen. And that is to start asking them questions. So tell me, how long have you been in the market for a pen? What time pens have you used in the past? This is a person. Typically, when you buy a pen, what time money do you spend on one? You buy expensive pen. I think the, the, the key to selling. Well, when you just go out trying to sell something, so what you're saying is, I don't give a shit about it. I'm going to ram this down your throat. what you need, I want to know what you've done in the past, so you ask questions. If I ask someone, hey, so how long have you been in the market for a pen? They say, oh, I'm not looking for a pen. Great, have a nice day. I don't sell people the things that you are looking for. I wouldn't try to sell you a pen if you're not looking to buy a pen. So that's, and if someone said to me, I say, wow, this person really knows how to sell. Because the biggest mistake that rookie sales would make is they try to sell to everybody. Versus weeding out people who are not interested in only selling to those who are. Here's the deal. The magic moment was when I looked at my 12 Schmendricks, as the phrase goes, and they were they were so disheartened over what it was going on. They were disheartened. They couldn't close rich people. I could, Danny could. Before that, we were closing average moms and pops. And I realized what was happening. And I realized in this one moment that I had a certain way of speaking that I had taught to Danny, because Danny was a natural salesman that was allowing me to immediately take control of the conversation. At the heart of all influence and how easy it is to influence. Now I'm not saying that when you control the list of the, the encounter, you're doing the talking. That's not what I mean. In fact, it's the opposite. When you're in control, you're asking very smart questions and it's the prospect that's doing the talking. You're gathering intelligence. But in those first few seconds, when you open up your mouth, you got four seconds 